Greetings YouTube, Fuzzfinger here, and in today's episode of Kingdom Hearts, we're going to be taking on the game's final option or boss, so do come and join me. Don't forget, if you enjoyed today's episode, you can support me by hitting the like button and being subscribed to the Fuzzfinger Gaming YouTube channel. Right, let's get on with it and see what lies ahead of In the last episode, we actually took on Sephiroth, I'm sure you guys remember that, that was a fun battle. And hopefully, if you've been following along with my walkthrough, you've been able to defeat him as well. One thing I did forget to mention, is that once you've defeated Sephiroth, that is the final encounter here in the Colosseum. So, when we exit, we'll be greeted as a reward with an optional cutscene. Optional in the sense that you don't have to see it by not killing the bosses. So there's no more rewards for watching that, but it's a pretty cool cutscene. And what we're going to do now is head over to Hollow Bastion, because it's in Hollow Bastion that our final challenge awaits. So once we've walked to Hollow Bastion, just make our way here now. We're going to be landing, when we get the options here, at the Castle Chapel. And I'm just going to prepare my team. And I'll explain to you how I've done so, because basically, when we approach that orb, we'll be kicking off a cutscene followed by the boss itself. And it's a tough one, so let's hope we can get this done. Okay, in terms of your magic, you're going to want to shortcut Gravigar, Aragar and Curagar. Uh, interestingly, you can actually use Gravigar on this boss. It doesn't do any damage to his health, but what it does do is, uh, basically, it stuns him so that you can get some combos in. You're going to want to make sure that Goofy and Donald are topped up, along with Sora of course, with items, in particular Elixirs and Mega Elixirs are pretty good, and if you're not going to use them now, then just trust me, you never end up going to use them anyway. So this is a good battle to start using those items on. Uh, in terms of abilities, standard stuff, make sure you have Strike Raid equipped, just as it was useful in the Sephiroth encounter, so it shall be here as well. And that's pretty much it, just make sure that obviously you save in case you need to restart. Uh, it is a bit of a challenge this fight and it does have a whole host of uh, interesting situations that it's going to cause for us which we'll see as we get into the battle but I'm just going to make some final preparations here and we'll get on with the show. So as I mentioned we're going to just approach the orb here and this will kick off the cutscene. There's no going back now. A gravity break, I forgot to mention, is probably something you want to equip. So this boss is an unknown boss, and he goes by the name of Unknown. Although if you've played the later incarnations of Kingdom Hearts, then his identity may be more somewhat familiar to you. I am Sam? I 
What's that supposed to mean? And we're off. So, as you can see, already, this guy hits you with nasty stuff. Which you need to avoid, like the plague. Stay on top of your healing. And we can hopefully trust Goofy and Donald to engage us in healing as well. The first part of the encounter is really just a slugfest. Yes, there's damage we need to dodge, but other than that... We're just going to have to beat him down and kick him into his next phase where things really kick off and the challenge begins. When he does that, uh, I'm just going to pause for a second to explain that. When he does that strange thing where your commands are overtaken, there's an option called release and it keeps switching between your commands. Best thing to do is to pick a button, for example the X command, which is what I do, and just spam it over and over until you're released. You will be taking damage until then. And the shock option doesn't actually do that much damage, so it's not something you need to worry about. So keep him targeted, and then just lay on the damage as and when is possible. And when he disappears, you can't actually hurt him, and then he goes, by the looks of it, uh, or Jedi on us, or Sith rather, or Sith, that's what I'm going to say. This lightning stuff hurts as well, unfortunately. But don't forget, you can hit him with that gravity spell, and that does stun him briefly. Although it doesn't always work, but it can work, which is impressive in itself, isn't it? See? And this is where we want to just spam, spam, spam. There we go, until we're freed from that ability. That debilitating ability, I might add. And then we have to just stay on top of healing at all times. Gravity obviously has to actually hit him for it to work. And it also interrupts his abilities. And you get 100 tech points for it. Oh, a little bit of lag for me. Gravity Break also has the same effect. But not to the same extreme as Gravity, so I do recommend still having the Gravity spell. And it looks like he's just down to his final health bar. A lot of people say this fight is more challenging than Sephiroth, and it can be, it can be. But in my opinion, Steffi Roth is a harder encounter because he's got far more abilities that can easily one-shot you. That have to be dodged. Whereas with the unknown here, you can literally afford to go all out more and then just heal up as necessary. He did not want to be gravity then. I don't blame him. So since we're low on health here, we just make, need to make sure that we keep Aragawa. And try and glide out of this if we can. Oh dear. So we'll just throw an elixir on here. I know he's low on health, but... 
That just makes him harder to hit. And we'll just try and get some gravities off if we can, because that's what will stun him in place. And now we can go in for the kill, can we? Nope. So yeah, he definitely gets harder as the fight goes on. Maybe I spoke too soon about him being easier than Sephiroth. There we go, we've done it. And 16,800 experience isn't too shabby either. Although I did take a lot of the XP gear off for this battle just to increase stats in other areas for our characters. An experienced necklace and an Ansem's report is our reward for defeating Unknown, along with another trophy. And if we just head to the journal here, we can see that we've got gold Mickey faces now next to every single journey uh, item here, which means that we've now completed the journey, and for that we get a whole bunch of trophies, as you can see. And if we open up the Ansem's report, we can read some of the new ones that we've collected, including the one we've just collected, where you can pause if you want to read it. You get a bit of information about the boss that we've just fought. But more than anything, we need to head back to save now. And look at that, the journal's got a gold mickey next to it, even in the menu, just to show that we have done everything. All the optional content in this game has now be com been completed, which means there is nothing else to do apart from the final game bosses so we'll certainly be doing that at the start of the next episode well actually just during the next episode quite frankly and so i'm going to see you back at the end of the world the final rest area which is where we'll be kicking things off for that so thanks for joining me today i hope this uh, video has helped you with your battles against the unknown boss and if it has let me know in the comment section and come back again soon and we're finally going to get this one finished cheers folks take care